Hi mate and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov to as usual and today I've got a real goodie lined up for you. This is a game I had yesterday with my two friends Redwood Forest and General Denny on airfield and this is basically a dream matchup for us. We have the only three tier 10 tanks on our team and there are only three tier 10s in the enemy team also. So my friends and me decide that we are going to make our push along the left flank because that's usually where all the heavy fighting happens. However, I spawned a lot further to the right side and I was kind of, because the IS-4 is rather sluggish, I was more or less behind them. So I couldn't quite catch up and then I decided, oh, I'm rather going to stay here and guard the uh, centre of the map and also the right flank because as you can see, there aren't all that many tanks from our team here. And a lot of enemies are pushing through, like for example the Panther 2 nearly managed to get to our base, but then he was sniped down, but still, this is a very dangerous situation here, so I really have to guard the scent, and I tell my mates, okay, you guys go to the left, and I'm going to stay here and watch out. So, I'm getting a bit bored, so I decide to push forward and take out the T-34, because the T-34, it looks like he's getting shots in at my friends, when they are moving, trying to move up and take out those enemy heavies there, that they are fighting with. So I decide that if I manage to take out that, um, that T-34, only it manage to intimidate him so that he doesn't uh, dare to poke and attack my friends, then I'm doing a good, good job here. So I'm basically trying to snipe his cupola because I don't have the gun depression to hit his hole. And there, one of my allies gets a nice hit into him. I think that might have been Redwood Forest, I'm not quite sure. Now, as you can see, this is really the limit of the IS-4's gun depression. Now, if you've seen my IS-4 review, you'll know that I don't really like this tank, but I've really changed my mind lately. This tank is really, really good. I really love it. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but somehow in the last few weeks, I've been enjoying driving this tank so much more than I used to. It's been so amazing, like basically any game I have my IS-4 is good or really good. And this is one of the really good ones. Now, I picked up my first kill on the T-34 and things are not really looking all that good for our team. Um, the 110 bounces off my frontal hull, it's quite good angle and usually low tier tanks will bounce off your hull on the IS-4. I keep going for his hull uh, because he's kind of angling his pike nose and because he's kind of angling his tank that kind of exposes the cheek of his pike to me and I'm able to easily take him out but even if he wouldn't be angling I could still take him out because well my gun's got really really good pen. Now I've got two kills and the score's five to six so although we're working quite hard here our team is still losing more or less, so I put a nice shot in on the rear of that T-54E1, but I, I retreat first of all because you think he's going to turn his turret, but he doesn't because he's afraid the E-50 will snipe him from the rear, so I decide to push on and try to take him out. Now with an above average damage roll I could manage to one shot him, but I don't. Average damage in this gun is 440 per shot, now I know he's got a very dangerous autoloader clip, so I don't want to poke against him really, but I, no he isn't reloading, but I just take my chances and take him out by firing at the low glazes just because I want to be 100% sure that I penetrate him. Now I think, okay, there are two enemy tier 9 heavies pushing around to our base, but I'm really slow and there's a full health E75 and a nearly full health E50 and the M103 and the enemy E75 that's also pushing to our base are on not all that much health. So I think the E75 and the E50 together should be able to deal with that threat. And I think my it's my duty at the moment to push to the enemy base, take out their artillery, and then help my friends that are fighting over there and, and take out those enemy heavies basically because they're having a hell of a fight over there. So I first of all put a nice shot into that Tiger 2. Don't know what he's thinking of giving me his flank, but I mean, Strictly speaking, even if he would give me my, his front, I would still be able to penetrate him. So, another shot, really low damage roll there, what a shame. I might angle my armor a bit. The great thing with the uh, um, IS-4 is it's got really good side armor, so you can do some really good angling. I think that shot penetrated, that, the Tiger 2 penetrated me, that's quite a letdown actually. Now, I'm a bit afraid of that E-75 there coming around. So, I basically get behind this house here before he can shoot me and then turn round to be able to help my E50 friend there. 
Now I've only got seven rounds of AP ammo left. That's a real problem with the IS-4. Now, I, in retrospect, I tried to go for the side shot there. I should have tried to hit his lower glacis, really, or waited because he turned his turret. That was a really poor shot, actually, there. I shouldn't have taken that. But I tracked him, but he repaired it. So that means he hasn't got a repair kit anymore. That's quite important. Now this enemy Tig 2, who I was sniping with um, early on, decides to come back and I, this this guy's a really bad player basically he decides to go into one on one engagement with an IS spawn I'm not sure it could be that there are other tanks from his team coming along him be, uh, coming along with him because he's being that bold and I would say there's an IS3 over there but I first of all focus down the Tiger 2 securing my fourth kill and you'll note that I'm now down to four rounds of armor piercing ammunition that's really bad news so I aim at the IS-3, that was really, I shouldn't have taken that shot, especially considering that I, I'm in that low ammo, that was really bad. Should have waited for the IS-3 to make the move. And really, there, it would have been good to just stay in position and be able to snipe the AMX-5100 when he went over. But I really didn't want to jiggle around because then I would have had to re-aim and Mike wouldn't have hit my shot. Now that WZ111 is being very sneaky, so I fire one clutch, which doesn't penetrate. I think it hit his turret. Now I'm down to my last round of armor-piercing ammunition. And I just want to go after the WZ, but then I see the artillery, and I have to fire this one clutch because otherwise he's going to clutch shot me. So, I make it happen. Fifth kill. And now I'm in for a top gun, but I'm the last tank on my team and we've still got an artillery piece. And now, oh my god, oh my god, there's a T124 behind me. But I'm first of all going to focus down this WZ111 because he's uh, on in one shot range of me basically. So I get my top gun and now I'm down to high explosive anti-tank ammo, premium ammo. I haven't got any normal ammo left. So... I, and I'm so lucky he hits my gun and only takes out my gun, but I, I really mess up my shot there. But I know that my reload is quicker than his reload, so if I make this shot count, I'll be able to take him out. And yes, seven kills. That guy was so unlucky. That T124 actually bounced from my rear at one point, or he hit my trap rather. But okay, so now I take out the AMX 5100, who's poking me, and secure Radley Walters' medal. And. Yeah, the T124 calls me a gold lamp, but yeah, I haven't got anything else left than gold ammo, so sorry, bro. But nine kills. Oh my days, I've got nine kills. This is my this is my personal record, actually. I've never I had eight kills. I, I had eight kills a few times, but I've never had nine. Nine kills in a tier 10 game. This is amazing. Now my E75 is telling me cap, and right now, as you can see, I've fired all my high explosive anti-tank shots. I'm down to heat at uh, HE ammo. And I know that I won't be able to seriously hurt a T125 or an E75 with, with high explosive ammo. So I decide to go for the cap because that's really the only thing I can do at this point. Um, I locate behind these houses here. And I know that... now. I'm, in this version of World of Tanks, I'm using for the replay. I haven't got my mods installed, but I use XVM on my real version of World of Tanks. And right now, I know that both of the enemy tanks are in the cap circle. And I'm uh, not in the cap circle, but near my base. And only one of them is capping at the moment. So, yeah. I think that I can maybe cap them out and maybe the T124 or the E75 will come back but at the moment if the cap goes on like this I'll be able to out cap them but now two of them have moved into the cap circle this is seriously bad news they are both capping and that means that I cannot out cap them anymore but I also haven't got the speed to get them so I basically know it's over right now I cannot win I mean maybe if I had stayed in the cap I could have made it a draw but, I mean, even in a draw, yeah, I mean, I can't win. I've got only HE ammo left, and they've capped out now. So, yeah, we lost that game, which was a shame, but still, nine kills was absolutely amazing. I was so glad to pick up nine kills in this game. And, yeah, the game ends. So, yeah, I, I don't really see how I could have won this game. Maybe, well, what I was counting on is that they would be greedy for the kill. And at least one of them would come back so that I could maybe outcap them. When that didn't happen, I I figured, well, 
okay, maybe I still had cap for one of them, that's fair. But then when they both started capping, then I had a real problem and I basically couldn't do anything. And I just realised that I basically couldn't win the game with HEM, except for if I was really lucky and, for example, got for Rhea for T125. So I really don't know what I could have done better in that game. I shouldn't have taken, probably if I hadn't taken some speculative shots earlier, for example, that E75 or the IS3, um, or if I hadn't bounced off the T110 E4 earlier, then I would maybe have had some heat or AP shells left at the end of the game to deal with this T110 E4 and, um, not E4, E5, and the E75, and I maybe would have been able to uh, get into the caps into my own base quickly and destroy those two guys, or at least damage them and postpone my defeat a bit longer. But realistically, the way the game looked at the end, I really didn't know what to do. Uh, if you guys have got any suggestions what I could have done better in this game or how you would have played it, please let me know in the comments. But for me personally, this was just a massive game. I was just At this point, I was just absolutely full of adrenaline and I was so happy to get 9 kills. So let's quickly check out the after game stats to see how good this game was exactly. So we got just above 90,000 credits and nearly 2,000 experience in that game. That was enough to pick us up our mastery badge. I was so glad to get it finally because I've had the IS4 for nearly half a year now and it's really difficult to get these mastery badges on your tier 10 tank so I was really glad to get it. We also obviously got the Radley Walters medal a steel wall and top gun. If we look at the team score, we can see we managed to deal out an amazing 6.7k damage, so nearly 7,000 damage, 9 kills, which is my new record, and also 1,300 base experience. Now, that obviously would not be enough to get us our mastery badge, but because we got stuff like a Radley Walters medal, uh, this was after, I think, after patch 8.6 or 8.7, that counts as. Uh, so you get the experience coefficient of a victory. So that actually is more than it says. And in the detailed report, we can see that we fired 26 shots, of which 23 hit and 20 penetrated. So 20 penetrating shots, that allowed us to deal out 6,677 damage. We received 20 hits, of which only 9 penned. And uh, one of them did splash damage, that was probably an arty hit. Or maybe somebody was firing... HE ammo does, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, we got 11 ricochets, so that's a really, really good ricochet rate there. We received 8,540 potential damage, that's amazing. Also, we detected 4 enemies, damaged 10, and destroyed 9. So, yeah, uh, that was just, that was probably the best game of World of Tanks, or one of the best I've played in a long, long time. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I was really, really sad that I couldn't pick up a, a victory in that game because that would have allowed me to get a pooled medal. But, you know, I really I really don't see what I could have done to win that game with HE ammo left only. And this tank is so slow that in that situation I probably wouldn't have made it back to the base in time. I'm not quite sure, but... Anyway, please let me know in the comments what you think I could have done and maybe tell me about games like this that you had, like really good games but you lost them because your team was not good enough or you did some mistakes in crucial moments. So I'm looking forward to your comments and thanks for watching as usual. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you out there on the battlefield.